My name is Jennifer Hartman. I'm the HR staff writer and human resources expert for Fit Small Business, and this video will show you how to create and modify a recruitment template and an HR applicant tracker template using Excel. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. You can also visit the article that covers these templates by clicking the link in the description. Let's start with the recruitment template. It is designed for the hiring team. It keeps applicant information at your fingertips, but also makes it easy to check on status, feedback, red flags, and other information that's important to the hiring process. Let's look at each element and how it's best used. This spreadsheet was created to be job specific. At the bottom of the file, you will see tabs marked position one, position template, and sample. Position one is ready for you to fill in with your first job. Save position template for future jobs. You can modify the cells to fit your applicant procedures. The sample tab shows you how you might use the template. Put the job title and description in row one. This is for the edification of your hiring team only. You can copy and paste this from the official job posting or put a summary of what interviewers should be considering. In row two, put the department you are hiring for or the responsible hiring party, whatever information is most important for the team to keep in mind. Row three is the header row and is currently auto-filled. It lists the description for each column. You can modify this row to fit your specific business needs. Row four and below is for your applicant information. In column A, put the applicant's last name followed by first name. This will make it easier to sort alphabetically. Column B can be used to record a reference for your applicant. For example, if an employee refers another person for a position, you can ask them about the candidate. You can modify this column by making a menu of choices. But we chose to leave it fillable so you can get more precise. Column C is for the application status, which lets you know where a particular candidate is in the process. This column has a pre-filled drop-down menu to choose from. You can also use color coding to make it easier to spot active versus rejected candidates. Place the date the applicant applied in column D. Column E is used to link to the applicant's resume. Resumes can be referred to with links or notes as to where they are stored, such as a Google Doc or a job board. If your company has a policy of phone screenings, then record that date in column F. Column G offers drop-down menu choices for scoring your phone screens. Some companies ask potential candidates to take online or in-person tests, such as for analytical skills, word processing, or trade skills. In column H, you can track if the candidate is scheduled, has taken the test, or whether they have passed or failed. Column I is used for testing scores. We left the score as fillable to accommodate the many ways that one can be graded. Columns J through R are used to record the date, interviewer, and score of each interview conducted. We allowed for three interviews, but you can add or delete as needed. The drop-down for the interview score indicates either pass or fail or a numeric scoring criteria. At any point in the process, you may want to conduct a background or reference check to verify qualifications. The background check menu in column S offers a simple pass-fail in addition to ordered and in progress. Columns T and U are to notate reference checks. Column T has a dropdown that shows if the reference check is ordered, in progress, or complete. Column U offers a place for scoring using the pass, fail, or numeric scoring system. And finally, column V is used to make any notes regarding the candidate. Next, we will review the HR Applicant Tracker template. It is designed for your hiring manager or HR department and includes needed but sensitive information. In this template, you can track all candidates for all positions. This template is similar to the recruitment template but has a bird's eye view. You can list all jobs and applicants. However, rather than all the details of interview ratings, this holds the contact and demographic information, the overall progress, such as the latest interview date, and the hiring results. It too has drop down menus so that you can keep notes consistent. There's a master sheet to include your information for each applicant and a sample to guide you. Column A is where you can put your own unique applicant ID code 
whether an identifier from another system, a social security number, or an in-house identification method. In column B, put the position title of the job for that specific candidate. In column C, put a link to the job description for that specific candidate. In column D, enter the department that is associated with the job position. Column E uses the drop-down menu to indicate the status of the applicant, whether it be a rejected candidate or one that is currently in the interview process. You can easily sort your spreadsheet by this column to view all candidates in each stage of the hiring process. Columns F through L is for the applicant's contact and demographic information. Demographics are important for HR considerations for equal opportunity employment, which not only impact the diversity of the company, but can also result in tax credits. Nonetheless, this should be considered sensitive information that does not impact hiring itself. Drop-down options are available for gender, applicant race, and veteran status. Columns M and O tracks the applicant's past and current work history. Column M includes a place to link to the applicant's resume or application. From their resume or application, you can easily fill in columns N and O with their current employer and position. Column P is for notating where the applicant heard about the job. This can help you with future recruiting planning and knowing where to post job ads. Columns Q and R indicate the date the applicant applied and the date of their last interview with your company, if applicable. Columns S through U are used to track the background check, reference check, and drug tests of each applicant. You can make notes or simply place the status, scheduled, completed, fail, pass, using the drop-down menu. Columns V and W are used to record the date you made an offer to the candidate. Should the candidate not accept your offer, you can include the reason in column W. And finally, column X is for interviewers to record notes. This is for high-level notes or additional comments. In conclusion, growing your company is exciting and having an organized applicant tracking system and a central place to keep information and notes can make it easier. You can adjust them to your needs so that you can get to the interesting part of recruiting, finding your next top talent. Thank you for watching. Click to subscribe to our channel and click the link below to visit our article.